In Excel, there are typically many different ways to solve the same task. You may write one complex formula in a single column, or you may write several simple formulas in multiple columns. In this video, we'll talk about the merits of each of these approaches. So we're gonna use our job interview template to discuss the merits of using a single column for a formula versus multiple columns. If you haven't seen that video, we walked through whether an employee was eligible for a raise, if they've been hired in the last year, calculated their raise bucket with a VLOOKUP, and then finally calculated their raise amount to understand the total salary increase expense in 2023. This is a very simple way to do it and very clear where you use different columns, but Excel has many, many different ways to accomplish the same task. So instead of doing this approach, what you could also do is calculate all of these at once. So if I wanted to create, let's just call this raise amount two, what I could do is equals if today minus their hire date is greater than 365, then a VLOOKUP on their rating. The table array will be my lookup table. My column index number will be two, which I want a exact match. Close that and then multiply that raise by the salary. And if not, I want it to return to zero. So that will return the same exact thing as your original column, but without the need to build these additional columns. Why would you use one versus the other? This first approach is much simpler and much cleaner for someone else to pick up because what they can easily do is see how you built this. They can walk through if the eligible column equals yes, then salary multiplied by the price bucket. You can see where the price bucket is pulling off and you can pretty easily walk through these formulas. If you showed up to this second column, this is a much heavier task to figure out as the formula is a lot denser, it's a lot more complex. So it's more challenging for someone else to understand how you built this formula. If you see someone else's formula like this, what I would recommend is go up here to formulas, evaluate formula. There's a really helpful tool to walk through your formula piece by piece. And you can say, if today, what's the date? minus their hire date is greater than 365. Then I perform the VLOOKUP on cell A3, which is A. That gives me the raise multiplied by their salary, gives me the answer of the raise amount I want. One final way you could do this just to show an intermediate approach is you could calculate a raise bucket that includes your eligibility. So I could say equals if today, minus my hire date is greater than 365. I want it to return a VLOOKUP of my rating on my table, locked in place two, false for an exact match, else I want zero. So now what I have is more or less the same raise buckets, but now I just have a zero for the raise bucket if they are ineligible. And so I could create another column or if I just want to calculate the total salary expense, I could use a sum product. Sum product will give you the sum of the product of two different arrays. So if I use a sum product of the salary and a sum product of my raise bucket, I will get the same answer as doing it separately. So different ways to approach this problem and different merits to each. I typically lean towards building additional columns as I think it makes it cleaner. It makes it easier to walk through and easier to audit and fix when you have mistakes in your model, but understand the different ways you can work in Excel and the different ways you can accomplish the same task.